What is up everybody? Hello there, welcome. Today is Wednesday, which is now your Thursday that this is releasing. Welcome, it's Thursday. Hello there, hello there. Today we are going to be jumping in and creating the Paul Stanley look from the band Kiss. As you can tell from the thumbnail, I am super excited um, about recreating this look. Paul Stanley has been one of my favorites growing up along with Gene Simmons and just the band in general. So this series has been really exciting and very, um, stressful to say the least. So let's go ahead and get started in creating this Paul Stanley look. If you are interested in seeing how I created the Gene Simmons look, I will go ahead and link that right here above so that you can click that, take a look at it, see how we do it, see the steps, etc. But let me not hold you up anymore. Actually, I'm gonna hold you up real quick. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So first step, as always, is going to be making sure that you have a clean slate. Can never stress how important that is. Today I went ahead and I washed my face with the Laura Vera Skin Gentle Cleanser. I will link that down below. It is great, it's soft, it's great, wonderful, woo. Um, and then I went ahead and I threw on some moisturizer. As I said in the Gene Simmons video, and as I am saying in this video, and I will be saying in the rest of the videos, all of Kiss's makeup looks are going to be heavy on the powder. So I cannot emphasize how important it's going to be to make sure that you put lotion on your face. Okay. I use CeraVe, CeraVe is great. If you've got eczema, it's perfect. Link down below. All right, next step, what we are going to do is the white face paint. What we're gonna do is put white all over our face except for on the right eye because the right eye is where the star is going to go. So you're gonna wanna put white face paint boop, 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 all around your face. Let's do that. I'm gonna take this sweater off because man is getting hot. So what I'm using is going to be the Ben Nye Clown White. Um, if you want to be sanitary, I highly suggest going in with a clean knife and scraping a little bit out and adding it to a small plate or pan for you to do your dipping out of that. That way, if someone else wants to use your paint, you're not going to be disgusting and have your oils all up in the paint. Just a tip. So Paul Stanley was born on January 20th, 1952. He was born in the lovely New York City. Oh my goodness. Side note, don't put as much white as I just did because this is too much. This is too much white. Specifically the upper side of New York City, kind of near 211th Street and Broadway. He was the second child of two children to his family. And he grew up in a primarily Jewish home. So he said before that he did grow up Jewish. Um, it is also said that his family wasn't that 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 religious um, because he did not have a bat mitzvah. So there you go. I'm not sure if I already said this, but he was born with the name Stanley Bert Eisen, E-I-S-E-N. Um, and so yeah, he was that was his name. He was not born Paul Stanley. He was born Stanley. He was born with something also called microtia, which is basically a misshapen ear. So a lot of his childhood, he really couldn't hear very well. He would be kind of like um, not really able to understand, I guess, direction when it came to sound. So that was something that was hard for him. And then on top of that, just being a kid, he did have to deal with a lot of children's scrutiny where kids would make fun of him, things like that. At the age of seven, he got his very first guitar. It was a child's guitar, so it wasn't anything of like craziness, you know? When he got his guitar, you know, they said that he really, really loved music. In his family, they used to listen to a lot of jazz, some light opera, things like that. And he got a lot of musical inspiration from Beethoven when he grew up. Some of his other musical inspirations growing up included Little Richard, Dimont, and the Belmonts, along with Eddie Cochran. The next step of our process is going to be creating the star. So like we did last time for the Gene Simmons video, I am going to just draw it in. I think that that is a very crucial part in making sure that it's going to look right. So I'm going to stay quiet, stay patient, and work on this design while you guys watch. I am also going to talk to you guys a little bit more about Paul Stanley. In 1960, he ended up moving to the Queens area and he ended up becoming very infatuated with doo-wop. 
and around that time was when the Beatles and the Rolling Stones started coming out and he was getting inspired big time not only by their vocal performances and all of that, but also from their just live performance in general. And at the age of 13, he got an acoustic guitar and he started to play Bob Dylan and more. As you can see, I'm wrapping up this this outline. We did have a little bit of a screw up and that's easy to just remove with a Q-tip. And then from there, patch on the white. So this part is a breeze, have no fear. Doesn't have to be completely perfect because in the next step, we can also make adjustments as well. Now we are here and the next step is going to be making sure all the white that I have inside of this, these black lines is removed. So I'm gonna take a Q-tip and basically along the inside, I'm just going to erase all of the white. It might seem obvious, but to some it's not. If you leave the white on the inside, and you put black paint on top, it's going to come out gray. It is not going to come out white, honey. So just remember that. Before Kiss, he was in a few other bands. One of them was a band by the name of Rainbow, and another band was by the name of Wicked Lester. And if you did watch my other video, thank you so much for tuning in. If you guys didn't watch the other video, Wicked Lester is actually the band that he ended up meeting Gene Simmons in. So. Yeah, there they are. Now after you sit and you wrap up cleaning up the inside of the liner, then now the next step is going to be setting everything in place. What you're gonna wanna use is a translucent powder or a white powder for this particular look. And I'm using the RCMA translucent powder. It's perfect, it's all around perfect. I love it, I use it just on a regular daily routine and then also for this as well. I like the fact that it has no color, it does help. Um, but yeah, you're just going to basically go in with the powder, don't inhale it, and just pack it on to the skin. What does white powder do, you might ask? What the powder does is basically set everything in place. If you do not put powder, you will start melting, especially if you live somewhere where it's hot and it's humid. You're gonna go out to your party and your star is gonna look so sad and so sorry, and your entire look is gonna just start looking just droopy, melty, you're gonna hug people, and it's gonna be everywhere. So what you do with the powder is it basically ensures that it stays in place. As you can see, my hands are clean, and if I just go like this, nothing comes off. Of course, if I push hard, then yes, but I'm putting a bunch of powder, so it should not budge. With the same statement, when it comes to your eyelids, you really want to make sure that you can keep them in tip-top condition and that they don't not only smudge, but also they don't get irritated. So I try to keep it light with the white that I put as far as the cream clown white. And from there you can stick any eyeshadow that you have that is a authentic white and set your eyelid in place to make sure that it does not move. I'm using a genuine white eyeshadow and that way it doesn't change the authenticity of the actual coloring. And I'm just packing it all in. We're gonna do the same thing with the black on the other eye, but for now we're just working on this one. From here, we'll just go ahead and wrap up this eye in general. He has a black eyeliner that is around the entire eye um, from the top to the bottom all around. So we're just going to go ahead and line this with our same eyeliner pencil that we had from before. His black eyeliner never really looks to be completely perfect on this eye, so just so long as it goes all the way around, you should be good to go. Okay. From here, we are going to go with our Ben Nye Cosmetics in cream colors, color black, CL black. And from there, we are going to fill in the star. The first step is going to be outlining the star just to make sure that you get everything in place. And then from there, you will go in and fill it in. After Rainbow and after 
Wicked Lester. On came Kiss. If you are interested to see how the bandmates got found and how they all ended up getting together, don't forget to watch the Gene Simmons video after this. But for now, we're just going to skip over that part. In 1974, they released their first self-titled album, Kiss. And in that moment was the time that Paul Stanley decided to change his name from just regular old Stanley to Paul. He chose the name Paul for a few reasons. Um, one, he hated his name of Stanley all of his life. So he was like, yeah, that's gotta go. And then uh, he also changed his name specifically to Paul because he was very heavily inspired by Paul McCartney along with Paul Rogers. Next, let's get into the star child. What made Paul Stanley become the star child, you might ask? Well, it was very hard to find that, but from what I could understand, the star was always something that he kind of gravitated towards. He just kind of drew it one day and was like, yeah, I like this, cool. But he did teeter-totter with other ideas as well. One of them was a bandit look. From here, what we're going to do is basically fill it all in and make sure that this all is black. What I'm going to use is just a plain brush dip it in black and just set it in place. You can set the star in place with a setting powder, um, just like that clear translucent powder that I was using on the white, or you can go in with a authentic black, just like I'm doing on my eyelid portion, just so that it doesn't get irritated. So I'm just going in, like I said, with pure black and just mattifying my eye, just to make sure that I don't have any issues that arise with my eye. Now that the inner part is black, I'm also going to take the same brush and just start pressing it all over the star to make sure that the rest is also set in place. It helps with adding extra pigmentation to your star while also making sure that it stays in place. Once you have set your star in place, his eyebrow is also black. So what we're going to do is go in with that same angled brush and now use that same black color that we used on making the star and just making a shape for your eyebrow. My brows are pretty thick already, so I am just going to follow those with this cream. He did also try a all red face, but he did admit that he looked like a long haired tomato. Yup, not the move. During the 80s, Kiss was still going strong and in the 80s, Paul Stanley actually decided that he wanted to move forward with them performing without the face paint. Stanley was a big guy pushing towards that. Gene really associated, from what I understood, um, with being the guy that he was and wearing the face paint, but was down to try new things in order to really you know, make his friend happy and just try something new altogether. So in the 80s, Paul Stanley was a very big moving piece into that decision. When it comes to his personal life, he did release a few little projects, side notes, create projects, all of that that were solo. Um, I didn't go too crazy into details on those. Do not forget to set it in place with a black eyeshadow as well went on to also doing more theatrics. And in 1999, he appeared as the Phantom in The Phantom of the Opera in Toronto. And in 2006, we're going to fast forward a little bit. He ended up debuting some art as a painter as well. Then we move forward to 2012. And in 2012, he and Jean partnered up with a few different investors and they created a few different restaurants called Rock and Brew. And then in 2014, he released a memoir named Face the Music. In 2006, he was inducted into the Long Island Hall of Fame. In 2008, he won the Showman of the Year Award. I did feel like I make this made this brow a little bit too dark, too thick, but I'm okay with it. Whatevs. Last step of this look is the lipstick. He has a very true authentic red lip going on. So today I'm gonna to be using the Kylie Cosmetics Mary Jo K Red Lipstick. It is a fantastic red lip that especially if you are going to be spending the day out and about talking, eating, drinking, whatever, this is a very good lipstick that will not budge. So it's a matte. It's not going to move. Shout out to my friend Westidia for buying it for me for my birthday or Christmas. You get you you the one girl. 
In 2009, he won the classic Gold Telly Award for the concert film One Live Kiss. And then he is also in the Gibson's Readers poll listed as one of the top 25 front men and women in rock and roll. I mean, come on, he's gotta be, he is something else. I mean, what a stage presence, I have gotta say. That one was like a given. And then in 2014, KISS and all of its original members um, were inducted into the Hall of Fame. He gotten to do a lot of cool things as a band, and then of course he has as well solely. He now lives in California with his second wife and his two children. He has three kids total, he's been married twice, one son from his first marriage and then two kids from his second marriage. And this guy's basically sums up the look for you guys. There are a few screw ups as always um, on the star itself. Photoshop will fix that. But when you are out and about, if you do have a light bit of a screw up, have no fear because that is just the name of the game. The more you do it, the easier it gets and the more tricks and hacks come up your sleeve. So I'm sure by the end of this four part series, I'm gonna be a pro at fixing all of these things. We'll see. But for now, this is what we've got. This is the Paul Stanley look. As I said, I will link everything that I've used down in the description box below so that you too can purchase them. If you guys like this video, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. It really does help with the algorithm, boosting the video, all that type of stuff. And if you guys like this content and would like to see more, which more will be coming out next Thursday, please hit that subscribe button so that you can, so that you can get notified, okay? It's important. You want to know when the next video comes out because, you know, by the end of the four weeks, you'll have options and you will know who you want to be for Halloween or for life or whatever. But anyways, thank you guys, like I said, so much again for sticking it out and watching it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you guys next week. See ya.